All right, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. I dropped my bubbly. We'll fix it. I just have to drink below the level of where it was spraying out of. Anyway, <laughs> today's adventure. I'm going to meet Stan. We have a 300 year old portage that we want to check out. We're not sure if the road to get in there, if we need my four wheeler or if we can drive a vehicle. So it's way down the highway and we're going to go check that out. And within a few kilometers of there, we also know of some bunk houses from the 1930s that were used by the highway workers. When they built the highway, the workers stayed there. So we want to maybe swing the detectors a little bit around those 1930 bunkies and check out the old road that's going to lead to Voyager goodies in a future video. So come and join Gage, Stan and I and let's do this. I pull up and this is what I see. I'm not sure what's going on here. <laughs> it's called a stretch and maintaining flexibility into your old age. Good for you, Stan, you flexible old bugger. But yeah, that's where we're going. This is the behind the scenes, guys. It takes hours and hours and hours of map hunting, researching, library, books, to figure out where we're going and what we're doing. But you see on this more modern map. So here we are, noisy as old heck. But somewhere just down here, a couple hundred yards, 1930s bunkhouses. Now the road we wanted to check that we thought we might be able to drive down is gated. But it doesn't say private, so we can walk it to get in there. But it means we're going to have to walk. So the day that we do our Voyager route, we'll have to walk in that road. We know where it is now. Unfortunately, we can't take a vehicle, but that's okay. Almost looks like a road right here. Oh, there is a road. Okay. So somewhere off of this road, how many, how many buildings? Well, six if you count the two that were supposed to be over here. Six bunk houses in the 30s, and uh, they ate, drank, slept, partied on site. All right, let's find them. And I imagine there's a bottle dump back there somewhere. They threw them all in the river. Well, we'll see if we can find it. Yeah, maybe in the river. Might be bottles in the river. So as Stan says, you want to find the place where they congregated at night, sat around the campfire, where they did their laundry down at the river, where they swam. You know, 1930s, there wasn't TV. They were sitting around campfires at night. So, all right, we're going to just start swinging right here and see what we can find. Gage approves of this site. Oh no, first hole, bottle cap. All right, I got this clump of I don't know what garbage, but Stan's yelling for me down at the river here. He said he's got something cool. Oh, look at that. Bank over there, and this thing is eating mussels like you would not freaking believe. Oh, and there's a den under. It's over there, it's around the corner. Well, I see a hole there. It's, it's all under this tree. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, a muskrat or a, an otter. You dug this out, you can freshwater treats. But look at all the beach here. There's signals everywhere. I just got a little lead thing. And check out the old Coke bottle. I mean, I have a little bit of water. It's just kind of washed out. What year is that? It looks pretty old. Oh, that, 30s. yeah, I'd that's 30s, 30s, I'd say. All right, I've got a coin here. Just a penny, but how old is it? Yeah, 1965, so not that old. Well, I can see some kind of shelter over there on the far side of the river. Somebody's built something over there. So I just found a tube of something here and I unraveled it and it says, for external use only. <laughs> Well, there's an old Dominion 3030 shell, probably from the 30s. And two feet away, another one. So this guy was obviously shooting at some deer back in the day. 
fired a couple shots at least. Heavy duty copper. Hmm. I just found that heavy duty copper and then there's this log that uh, is hollowed out here. And I see a depression in the ground right there. So is this where one of the bunkies was? I don't know. There's a there's a metal. This is much more modern, but well, an old 22 shell. Lots of junk on this road. Bottle caps and camping stuff and hunting stuff. Well, there's about a quarter of the crap that I've got in my pouch right there, guys. It's all the same stuff: bottle caps, shell casings, and tin foil. All right guys, I'm gonna just show you, uh, turn the headphones off and show you how many shell casings are on this trail. So I just dug 15 casings. There's one there. One there. I don't have to go very far. One there. <laughs> they're, they're all ringing up the same. All right, I'm calling it guys. Officially, no treasure in this location. Not old enough. But it's a place we can check off on the map and say, been there and checked it out. Oh boy, did we finish just in time. Hey guys, another day an adventure calls. So Stan and I are trying to figure out where to go metal detecting. Um, it's the grass is so high. It's a lot of work right now. So we thought well, maybe in town somewhere and I thought What about the six inch coil? I bought this a couple years ago. I I did some tests with it I didn't really like it on the Knox. It changes all of the sounds and it gets tricked it gets tricked by nails a lot But I thought well, maybe today's the day we have nowhere else to go Let's just go to an old section of town put on small coils and we can do walkways and pathways right in town, some sidewalks maybe, and see if we can find old silver in the oldest part of towns. Town. A few weeks back, I took a really good tumble down some rocks and I wanted to show you guys, it damaged my coil. There's actually a hole that goes right through and it's no longer sealed, but uh, it should be okay. The coil inside is sealed, but anyway, the 11 inch coil did get whacked on the rocks. It's still working, but I think maybe I need to seal that up with something just for my own peace of mind. I don't know what, but wow, that's so tiny compared to what I'm used to swinging here. But we're going to try it. We're swapped over. And I'm actually going to bring this one in my pack sack because I know before I got so frustrated, this, the sounds are so different on this little one. And I wasn't impressed with it, but maybe it's been a couple years. Maybe I need to give it another good thorough go. So um, I don't want to knock. I don't want to knock on knock the macro. I love their products, guys. You guys know that I used the Cruiser for like three years. John is on his third Cruiser. Uh, I own a Simplex. Stan owns a Simplex. They make great products. My problem is that I've contacted them like five years in a row saying, hey, guys, can you support the channel? Can you send us something to try? And nope. They told me last time, they told me, well, we've already got two Canadians. I don't know who those two Canadians are, what channels they're running. Um, I guess we're small fish at 20 some thousand subscribers and I get no help. So I really, really wanted to try the legend. I really wanted to, uh, you know, put it through some paces, some testing. We've done a lot of testing on this channel. You guys know I'm scientific. I'm unbiased because I also use the AT pro. I had a bounty hunter machine. Um, you know, I, I use anything that I think can get us treasure. And I'm not committed to one. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's right there is why they don't want to send me products because I'm not committed. Look at I'm still wearing the old AT Pro hat. I still own and use the AT once in a blue moon, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on the Legend. Now, yeah, it's a $900 investment, and I don't think it's that much different than the Knox. It doesn't find Canadian clad any better, which is one of the things I, I'm looking for in a new machine. Is I, I love the simplex. What I don't like about it is that it a lot of targets, tin foils, bottle caps, it rings those up as coins, okay, where the Knox does not. I think the legend is in the same vein because basically what Nocta did was they copied the uh, Knox. They just said, oh, let's tear it apart. Let's build our own the exact same. They even changed the tones 
on the legend to sound like the Knox. Hey, whatever works, right? I'm really thinking about getting one for the channel, but I've been on the fence all summer. I don't own one yet, so hey, knock the macro. If you're watching, guys, again, I'm reaching out. And I re reached out in letter form. They even got back to me two seasons ago and said, yeah, what do you want? And when I told them what I wanted was, hey, send us a detector to try. Send us some pinpointers to try something. Never heard back from them. But I guess it was if, I, if they were going to give me a hat or something to promote their products for free to our 30,000 subscribers, they would have did that. Oh, I'm definitely going to have some kind of detecting complex if I detect with this little six inch coil. <laughs> it's so tiny. Okay, so I'm in one of the oldest sections of town and I'm just going to do, there's lots of sidewalk here on both sides of the street, more than I can do in one day. But uh, let's just give it an hour and see if we can, if we can find anything worth sticking around for. And if not, we'll move. There you go. Look at the old houses. You know, you know, this is an old part of town. This is probably the oldest part of town, right back to the very turn of the century. So even though there's only four feet of space there, this coil is so small, it takes forever <laughs> to go across it. You would cover that in three seconds with the 11 inch coil, but it's cool. We're going to stick with it. We're going to try it today. All right, so we'll document all these today because we're using the small coil. That was ringing up 35 and I don't know if it's part of a big old nut of some kind that's broken i'm not sure but that would be a silver coin signal on the bigger coil okay 14 i was expecting a pull tab but it's actually foil okay solid 23 was a penny that's normal that's that's in the right range even with the big coil so okay so we got an old salt and pepper shaker top another penny and a piece of copper i think he stalks me Follows me on YouTube. Heavy duty zip pull right there. That's heavy. So I really have to remember to slow my swing down. If I'm doing my normal swing with my 11 inch coil, it's just way too fast. Hmm, some kind of fastener. Okay, so a rusty old nail that did ring up into the 30s, but it was down into the 20s, 30s, it was all over, so I knew it wasn't a coin. Hey, solid 24, and it was right down in there on the side of the sidewalk. Heavy brass fitting, ringing up solid 28. And to prove my point, look at how fast Stan can cover the same sidewalk with his coil on the simplex. He's moving at about six times the speed that I am with that little coil. Okay, so we talked about the six inch coil before, guys, and really, the only places I can see it being an advantage are somewhere like heavy bush where you got to go between trees or underwater, okay, because it's going to move much easier through the water or along an old fence line or something that the 11-inch the coil is just going to scream from three feet away that you can't get to. I mean, this will still, I mean, you can't get right up to a fence with this. You still got to be out a foot. It'll get you closer. But I mean, the amount of time that's taken me to cover these two sidewalks, about an hour and a half here today, I could have done that in 25 minutes with the other coil. Now we are testing it today. I was hoping to find an old silver. We're in the old part of town. I'm not done yet, but really, I find it hard to justify the six inch coil. I still do, even on this reevaluation here, a couple years in, it's... Oh, Stan, moon in traffic down there again. Jeez, buddy. Eh, hey, solid 20. That'll get you a little padlock. Apparently this cat is really well fed. Right there, because he's not even looking at the pigeon over there in the middle of the road. You lazy cat, you. And apparently the pigeon has a death wish. He's just going to sit in the middle of the road until a big truck comes along. Well, that's uh, shaving cream in a tube. So that's an older one. That's before my time. Okay, guys, my last thoughts on the six inch coil here. I thought of one other place you might want to try using this, and that would be for kids. If you were out detecting with kids, you know, depending on their size and age, this is very easy for them to swing. Um, and the other place, maybe a really trashy area, but I don't think so. Because in those trashy areas, I do just fine with my 11-inch DD coil. Yeah, sometimes you got to dig a little bit of extra garbage, but you're going to dig it anyway. So it's not like this thing is going to, you know, go right through there and pinpoint only the good stuff. It's not. 
So I can't say that that would be a justification, but definitely water, definitely for kids, and definitely in a tight, confined space between fences or something like that. That's about the only places I would say that that is uh, maybe worth thinking about. But 98% of the time, guys, I do just fine with my 11-inch coil. It's hot. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.